Sir. We are here at the three Michelin star restaurant, Abac. Before I understood how to pronounce it, I was saying A-B-A-C, capital C at the end, lowercase a, I don't know. But it's a hotel and a restaurant. Can't wait to experience this. I have no idea what I'm gonna expect, but it's gonna be good. Not sure how to describe that drink. Look at this thing, it's like a little meringue. It disappears. It's like cotton candy. <laughs> Very fantastic. It was on a mint leaf. This fantastic explosion of olive oil on a mint leaf is lovely. Mm -hmm. Always love little shapes in your food. Messes with the idea that you shouldn't play with your food, you should. I'll try the local wine. It's a nice one. It's a little sweet. I really like it. Did I just like the butter knife? Yes. At some point in my life, I'd love to say, hey guys, you want to come over for some chips and dip? And conserve this. <laughs> Say this is one of the best parts of the whole meal. Yeah. Okay, madam, for you we have the pumpkin cream with pumpkin seeds and emmental cheese. And uh, in here we have the nori siwi taco. On the side we have different vegetables, caviar oil and basil leaves. I recommend you take this taco with the plate and enjoy it. Delightful. There's so much flavor in that little cream. I have no idea what's in there. It's like a mushroom cream. Is that what you said? Yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. That is very nice. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Wow. It's a raisin flan, tomato infusion, plankton butter. The first dish was actually caviar, caviar soup. So that got my taste buds. Um, not sure exactly what I said it was, but it was good. Our waiter said the bread is the best part. And anytime I had bread, I always compare it to Gwen in Los Angeles. Um, this bread is good. Not quite Gwen, but good. Thank you. So my last dish was pumpkin soup, which was delightful. It tasted just like pumpkin. It was so nice. This tomato. Pretty sure they added like half a cup of oil to it, but it's so good. Is this the tomato? Is this a leaf? Is this a leaf of tomato? Oh. Probably. Parmesan tomato. Wow. Are you filming this? That just happened.
I just ate a Parmesan tomato. Brings me back to when we were in Austria. I went to an all vegetarian Michelin star restaurant. And they did something with like the cucumbers and the peas. It should be illegal. It was so good. The, the celery. There was I had celery in six different ways. This is is up there. It's bringing me back. The tomato is heavenly. Babe, you have to finish that part. The tomato. You can't let that go. Ask yourself this, babe. Are you gonna walk away knowing that went to the trash can? Secretly, I think every waiter clears our plate with their fingers afterwards because that cannot be thrown away. It's an injustice. You talk about the injustices of the world. I mean, you gotta push through the pain. We talked about this in Central. Yeah, in Central. You're like, we've had this talk. Yeah, reference Central video right now. Check out how to push through the pain in the fourth best restaurant in the world. I'm always confused when they have they bring out utensils, especially for a dish you've literally never eaten before. And when you go to Michelin star places, you're eating a lot of things that you've literally never eaten before. So I'm always like, do I use the fork? Do I use the spoon? I don't have proper etiquette for this dish. I don't know. I've never tried it before. So it's always a fun little guessing game. Go ahead. I don't think that a meal should be a reason to have pain in your life. I'm happy to push through the pain, but I did try at Central and it was still too much for me. And while I don't regret anything, I realized I have to pace myself a little bit better. So I tried the tomato and it was delightful. And I will remember that flavor forever, even if I don't eat every single bite of it. Not really sure what just happened, but I'll embrace it. That's where faith comes in. You gotta have faith in the moment, you know? You gotta be open to new experiences. Like this. Like this. So this is like that. Alright. Look at that. It's melting in my hand. It's like space foam. Did you see that? There's no density to it. That was amazing. Look at that, babe. Caviar, piparras, piparras is kind of jalapeno. And this is the cocktail sauce. The cocktail sauce is the main tendon with meat production. It's different. I'm, I'm coming around to the idea of tartare. Um, has to be the best of the best, but very nice. This is a manly man's dish. Sleep deprivation um, is causing a little um, short-term memory loss. So this is a tomato with oil caviar. Very fresh, much sweeter than the previous tomato we had. But it's still very nice. And with this little cracker, I think I, think I need to take a bite of the cracker with it. And it's absolutely perfect. Let's see. You gotta use your fingers, baby. I'm just I'm having a hard time with the utensil situation. Do you eat this with a spoon or a fork for your fingers? I don't know. I've never eaten this before, so. Where'd it go? Hey, look. It's the Gardens of the Galaxy girl hanging out in the back of the restaurant. 
I realized I was doing a terrible job of informing you about what I was going to eat. So, here's my next dish that we have not seen yet. Fried squid with an ink pastille in the style of a calamari sandwich. That was my Charlton Heston version. Here's my brother version. Calamari with some black stuff. It's gonna be good. Sure shit. So for you we have these uh, fried uh, seashore uh, leaves. It's a kind of, uh, they're kind of leaves. You know? Um, and that this is a uh, different kind of artichoke textures with some cheese foam and crunchy kale. Yeah. Well, stir from that black plate and then continue here. Uh, that's made it with basically a uh, vegetable uh, charcoal, charcoal is it called? Yeah. Uh, with squid. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know what it is. Crunchy little, um, ooh, the coconut. See, these things, it's like a wine list on the back of a wine label. They don't say anything. How can I describe this? It's like an empty donut shell. <coughs> yes. On top of a creamy calamari coconut dish. Yes. Who doesn't like squid ink? But the Spaniards, they love squid ink. Squid ink anything. They'll squid ink anything. Look at this squid ink. The nicest form of squid ink I've ever had. They took the mean and nasty and took it out. It was nice. Chinese little brioche with eel. First time I had eel, I was in uh, South Korea. And it was an all-you-can-eat buffet that cost $89. I mean, it blew my mind. And there was like five different kinds of eel. So I'm excited to eat this one. It's in uh, uh, smoked smoked uh, brioche. I showed you the smoky part. It was like a cedar smoke coming through. They, had, they, they piped it in the smoke. Here we go. The smoky really works with the eel because the eel is so strong and it matches the intensity of the eel. The brioche is like a nice little baby bassinet for the eel so it can just sit in its own little heavenly juices and smokiness. Take a nap. I'm convinced the wasabi was just for show because I, I snorted it. I didn't even know I, I did it. To my etiquette teacher, please send help. I should probably text you right now. I'm confused. Technically, you start from the outside, but I don't know if I start with this or this, or like if the small spoon is for the foam or for the. I'm lost. Exactly. Let's just try the flower petals, which look beautiful. Artichoke is one of my favorite foods, and um, the last time I was in Barcelona with one of my friends, we had it in a paella, and she's like, are you sure you're not eating fish? Because she had never seen artichoke before. I was like, oh, I know artichoke. My family would have artichokes like once a week growing up. We loved artichokes in my house. This is artichoke four ways. So fried crispy, puree, and then um, just like regular pieces of artichoke heart. <laughs> this dish will be finishing. So uncomfortable with figuring out how to eat this. 
There's the leaf. There's the fried. We'll eat the fried. What are you looking up at? In Ocean's Eleven, they teach you if you look up, you don't know what to think. I didn't expect the cover of the leaf to be sweet. It is very sweet. I don't mind. It's, what is the leaf up? I'm asking a vegetarian slash vegan what what leaf it is. You should know all the leaves. I don't know. Are lettuce and cabbage the same thing? Are they in the same family? No. They're not related. Very different. Cabbage is cruciferous. Okay. What's the biological origin of a lettuce leaf? Not what if it identifies? Here's a question. What if a cabbage leaf has a dead insect on it? It is not vegetarian. It becomes non-vegetarian. What if an omnivore eats a lettuce leaf? Is that lettuce leaf now still vegetarian? Or did it become something else? It's still vegetarian. The lettuce leaf remains vegetarian throughout its entire state of decom decomposition? Babe, I work hard enough during the week. I don't need a test. I don't need a test in vegan and, and vegetarian. I'm just curious. When does the lettuce leaf not become vegetarian? <laughs> when it's, uh, it comes in contact with a dead thing that had a face and a mom. You're coming up. You got the Chinese cheese bun. Freeze-dried truffle and roasted and crunchy onion skin and paper. Skin is one of the most fantastic things to put on a menu. It's so trendy. Okay, made with onion uh, from Figuera. Here, okay. With Parmesan cheese, kumquat, walnuts, truffle, and the paper onion. With French onion soup. The original onion. This is a way I'll throw this away. Who knew this could turn into this? Anytime your waiter says be careful, pay attention. <laughs> you don't want this squirting in the face. <laughs> what is that? First time I've had an onion soup with crunchy whole onions in it. Can you hold it out? Most vegetarian menus depend on mushrooms because mushrooms are kind of a meaty texture more so than other vegetables. If I were to guess, it's a rice pasta. It's really nice. Coming up next, red mullet with a fairy kale and celery puree with an enye with citronella. The redneck with the mullet and the fairy tale godmother that walks around with celery and Nutella. Babe, I think redneck's on the menu. Not to be confused with mullet. The hairstyle. Very meaty fish. It's like a firm tilapia meats swordfish. The little undertones of walleye. There it is. Celery puree. Very nice. It's like a heart of palm mashed potato. The most perfectly pureed mashed potato. But made of celery. We're sitting at our table the whole time and we don't know? No, it's not a nice surprise. <laughs> That's the cover you ate.
Not just salt. I don't think so. There's something in there. <gasps> oh, it's my so next. Yeah, yes, the salted prawn. Exactly. What we do here is uh, nice. this prawn is from Palamos. It's one of the best prawns here. Palamos is in Costa Brava. So we cook it in salt for hours, and now is the time to back it to the kitchen, and it's coming back like in uh, three or four minutes. Yeah. 2013, really nice one, guys. And if you're not wine drinkers, don't be afraid of the little sediment at the bottom. It's a natural process. It doesn't harm the wine in any way. It doesn't harm you in any way. It's totally fine, totally edible. And it does not defect the wine in any way. So you can't send it back if there's a little sediment. It's actually a good sign. In addition to that, it shows you the aging process doesn't mean it was aged in, improperly or wrong, wrongly. It shows you that it's been aged. This is a nine-year-old wine, so it's expected to have a little extra seasoning. We, um, we discovered the prawn was hidden among us this entire time. Hallie was surprised. The salted prawn was part of the scenery. The little subtle hints of our carnivorous behaviors as a society. Thank you. This is a soup made of oil, and oil soup, truffle oil, to be specific, so not complaining. What happened? Tastes like truffle oil, pure truffle oil. It's a little bit of crunchy stuff, but it's so good. Okay, coming right up. Marinated and roasted lamb ribs with Arabic touches. Served with artichokes and Jerusalem oil preserved with the truffles and roses. If I were to say that differently, the marinated and roasted lamb ribs are touched by Arabic men serving artichokes in Jerusalem, laying in the truffles and roses. Chardonnay and Savoco, they call the blue scooter that's made as Perolino. Chardonnay and Savoco, they call the blue scooter that's made as Perolino. He said not to touch it. Incredible. This is asparagus, that's delicious. And a risotto, that's delicious. I like it. Ready for the lamb rib? Touched by Arabic men. Laying in a bed of roses in Jerusalem. It's coming right up. Lots of flavor there. This restaurant, Abaka, was ranked number 16 on the world's top restaurants in all of TripAdvisor a few years ago. Pretty fascinating stuff. I would say it's worth a visit. A little pricey, but YOLO! Either that or paint chips, we don't even know. Sorbet thing is one of the most elevated smell desserts. I've ever had. Raspberry balloon with lollipops and begonias and tonka bean. Okay, so the main dessert is that one, is the Hibli one. Mm -hmm. What's happening over here? Tastes like candy, but it's fun. to describe it, it tastes like a cherry Jolly Rancher foam. It's delicious. They trouble everything. Is there trouble milk? And upside down, discharge the string. Like a pro. See how I kept the helium intact? 
keep the string for later. Always exhale completely. Helium is perfectly fine to ingest into the lungs. The lower form of nitrogen produced on the outside is actually better for your body. one of the best restaurants we've been to <laughs> in Barcelona and around the world. Thank you for coming with us. Make sure you like and subscribe. Please be sure you hit that like button. <laughs> Send you some algorithm love. Yep. Okay. Just this once. And maybe if I have a daughter one time. You have a two year old? Don't eat the lipstick. In this case, you can. Pretty good. Taking these to go. Okay. Because I said this place was about the desserts, in my opinion, I ha I'm gonna have to try all of them. When we left, like, Joel Rubuchon was like, it was all about the mashed potatoes. This place. Look at that. Wow. It's like a hard fudge. Fantastic meal. Different. Very different. Pleasantly surprised. I liked it. It should definitely be on the world's best list though. Um, they missed they missed the boat on this one. But I guess they all can't be on there. <laughs> Wrong way. That was the wrong way. That's the wrong way. Look at this. It was good though. Looks good. I feel like we just had a minute.